Hi there, this is Solitude Ronan from Solitude Ronan Films and welcome to part 8 of my Ake Cowder's Mackie season. Today we're going to talk about La Vie de Bohème from 1992. Again, this features in the Artificial Eye Ake Cowder's Mackie collection. He did do a film in 1990, um, I Hired a Contract Killer, which isn't actually in this box set. Um, and I haven't seen that one. Um, I will try and try that down at some point. So this is an adaptation of Henri Murger's um, book, Scene de la Vie de Bohème. Um, I'm guessing the life of Bohemians. And this is shot in black and white. It's a kind of difficult film to talk about because as far as plot there's not much. It focuses on three characters um, who are in the lower rung of the artistic world in Paris, even though I've got a feeling most of this was probably shot in Helsinki. Um, we still have the same peeling wallpaper and cracked walls and dingy little bars. There is a couple of shots of the Arc de Triomphe, um, but I'm not sure whether that's stock footage sure somebody will be able to tell me whether this was actually shot in Paris or not. It, again, it's a low budget film. There's a really nice way of shooting in a train station to give the impression that we're actually at a train station, but I don't think we actually are in a train station. Um, this is shot in ravishing black and white. This might be Cowder's Mackey's best looking film. Obviously he has made other black and white films, but this one has a a kind of real stately, um, monochromatic look to it. The final shot in the film, for example, is absolutely beautiful. Um, it stars Matty Pelempa, who has been in just about all of the Kyrus Mackey films so far. Um, it also stars Carrie Van Anen, who has been in a few, um, Evelyn Didi and Andre Wilms and has a wonderful performance by Laika as Baudelaire the dog um, who looks like a black German Shepherd who gives a wonderful performance um, a witty um, really zestful performance by um, Baudelaire the dog so Matty Pelempa plays Rodolfo who is a painter um, Andre Willems plays Marcel, who's a writer. We're introduced to him first, as he has had his um, play in 21 parts, or 21 um, scenes turned down. And then we meet um, Carrie Van Annen's character, who is like an avant-garde musician. And it follows their struggles to try and be recognised, struggles to try and find food and money to put... Um, on their table, there's a wonderful scene later in the film where the three of them are talking about the food they can see through a window. Um, obviously, that has wonderful music. It has the Kaurus Mackey black humour. Um, but also introduced Evelyn Didi, who plays Mimi, who is the on and off love interest of Rodolfo. And we really get a sense from her character and another... Um, girlfriend of one of the characters of sometimes the price that the partners of artists pay um, they kind of get shelved for, you know, the writer spends all of his money in trying to get first edition books rather than actually food on the table so it does have some interesting points about the price we pay for art and rather we put art ahead of you know, having food on the table. Because um, obviously some of our Blu-ray collectors 
hopefully aren't at that stage, but you can easily see it getting to that stage. Um, will I buy that special edition um, Blu-ray of a film I have um, four times already, or do I need to buy a loaf of bread? Um, for me, it's not as engaging as his other films. I know it's fairly highly rated, um, but for me, his adaptations aren't as engaging to me as his films that come from his mind. Um, I'm just weird. I think I prefer Cowboy's Mackie's slightly off the wall films. Um, I mean, this one still has the trademark humour. Um, it has that deadpan delivery. Um, so it's not a film that I don't like. Like I said, the cinematography is wonderful. Um, the performances are Kyrus Mackian, um, especially by Baudelaire the Dog. Um, so the basic, some of the plot points are that Rodolfo um, gets deported back to Albania because he's been living in France um, on false, not false bar passports, but he doesn't have the papers to actually stay in France. Um, so he gets deported as opposed to facing time in prison. Um, Mimi moves on to another guy. Um, they smuggle Adolfo back into the country. Um, and he finds Mimi with another guy. Um, I won't go into a specific plot point that does actually happen later in the film. But again, that's delivered with the same kind of deadpan nature um, as things do tend to get delivered by Kaurismaki. Um Sam Fuller turns up in a cameo. Obviously Jim Jarmusch was in Leningrad Cowboys Go America and Sam Fuller takes his turn. The three of them are all kind of um, somehow connected. So in short I don't have that much to say about it just because the film kind of drifts as these characters try and find a way to survive as they get their knockbacks. This isn't the romantic view of the artist in Paris. Um, it's a portrait of struggling artists who aren't being recognised and how they survive the day to day. Um, it has all the Kairos Mackie trademarks. Um, like I said, it does have beautiful cinematography. But for me, I didn't find it as engaging as some of the other ones that I have looked at in the first seven episodes of this series. So please let me know in the comments below if you love this film what am I missing um, and hopefully you'll join me again for the next part in the Kauris Mackie journey so this is Solitary Ronan from Solitary Ronan Films saying thanks very much for watching and farewell